Hello and welcome to this amazing chapter of Grade 9 Physics Sound. Every day we hear sounds from various sources like humans, birds, bells, machines, vehicles, television, radio, etc. Sound is a form of energy which produces a sensation of hearing in our ears. There are also other forms of energy like mechanical energy, light energy, etc. We have talked about mechanical energy in the previous chapters. We know that law of conservation of energy states that we can neither create nor destroy energy. We can just change it from one form to another. When you clap, a sound is produced. Can you produce sound without utilizing your energy? Which form of energy did you use to produce sound? In this chapter, we are going to learn how sound is produced and how it is transmitted through a medium and received by our ears. Sound is produced by striking, plucking, scratching, rubbing, blowing or shaking different objects. By doing this, we set the objects vibrating and produce sound. Vibration means a kind of rapid to and fro motion of an object. The sound of the human voice is produced due to vibrations in the vocal cords. When a bird flaps its wings, do you hear any sound? Think how the buzzing sound accompanying a bee is produced. A stretched rubber band when plugged vibrates and produces sound. Propagation of sound Sound is produced by vibrating objects. The matter or substance through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. It can be solid, liquid or gas. Sound moves through a medium from the point of generation to the listener. When an object vibrates, it sets the particles of the medium around it vibrating. The particles do not travel all the way from the vibrating object to the ear. A particle of the medium in contact with the vibrating object is first displaced from its equilibrium position. It then exerts a force on the adjacent particle. As a result of which the particle, the adjacent particle, gets displaced from its position of rest. After displacing the adjacent particle, the first particle comes back to its original position. This process continues in the medium till the sound reaches your ear. The disturbance created by a source of sound in the medium travels through the medium and not the particles of the medium. A wave is a disturbance that moves through a medium when the particles of the medium set neighboring particles into motion. They in turn produce similar motion in others. The particles of the medium do not move forward themselves, but the disturbance is carried forward. This is what happens during propagation of sound in a medium, and hence sound can be visualized as a wave. If you are liking the video, do hit the like button. Sound waves are characterized by the motion of particles in the medium and are called mechanical waves. Air is the most common medium through which sound travels. When a vibrating object moves forward, it pushes and compresses the air in front of it, creating a region of high pressure. This region is called a compression. This compression starts to move away from the vibrating object. When the vibrating object moves backwards, it creates a region of low pressure called rarefaction. As the object moves back and forth rapidly, a series of compressions and rarefactions is created in the air. These make the sound waves that propagate through the medium. Compression is the region of high pressure and rarefaction is the region of low pressure. Pressure is related to the number of particles of a medium in a given volume. More density of the particles in the medium gives more pressure and vice versa. Thus, propagation of sound can be visualized as propagation of density variations or pressure variations in the medium. Having discussed this, what do you think? Can sound make a light spot dance? Well, the answer is 
Yes, sound can make a light spot dance. The vibrations made by the sound waves deflect the way of the ray of light and make the light spot dance. Sound needs a medium to travel. Sound is a mechanical wave and it needs a material medium like air, water, steel, etc. for its propagation. It cannot travel through vacuum. Let's demonstrate it via an experiment. Take an electric bell and an airtight glass bell jar. The electric bell is suspended inside the airtight bell jar. The bell jar is connected to a vacuum pump as shown here. If you press the switch you will be able to hear the bell. Now start the vacuum pump. When the air in the jar is pumped out gradually the sound becomes fainter although the same current is passing through the bell. After some time when less air is left inside the bell jar you will hear a very feeble sound. What will happen if the air is removed completely? Will you still be able to hear the sound of the bell? Let us know in the comment section below. Now let me explain how sound is produced by a school bell. When the school bell is struck with a hammer, the bell is set into to and fro motion called vibrations. And we know that a vibrating body produces sound. Makes sense, right? Now the next question is, why are sound waves called mechanical waves? Sound waves are mechanical waves because they need a material medium for propagation like air or liquids like water or metals like silver. Okay, now answer this. Suppose you and your friend are on the moon. Will you will you be able to hear any sound produced by your friend? No, because sound waves need a medium through which they can propagate. Since there is no material medium on the moon due to the absence of atmosphere, you cannot hear any sound on the moon. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. As we already know, sound propagates in the medium as a series of compressions and rarefactions. These waves are called longitudinal waves. In these waves, the individual particles of the medium move in a direction parallel to the direction of propagation of the disturbance. The particles do not move from one place to another, but they simply oscillate back and forth about their position of rest. There is also another type of wave called transverse wave. In a transverse wave, particles do not oscillate along the direction of wave propagation, but oscillate up and down about the mean position as the wave propagates. Thus, a transverse wave is the one in which the individual particles of the medium move about their mean positions in a direction perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. When we drop a pebble in a pond, the waves you see on the water surface is an example of transverse wave. Light is a transverse wave, but for light, the oscillations are not of the medium particles or their pressure or density. It is not a mechanical wave. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do press the bell icon too for future notifications. Characteristics of a sound wave we can describe a sound wave by its frequency, amplitude and speed. A sound wave in graphic form is shown here which represents how density and pressure change when the sound wave moves in the medium. The density as well as the pressure of the medium at a given time varies with distance, above and below the average value of the density and pressure. Compressions are the regions where particles are crowded together and represented by the upper portion of the curve here. The peak region represents the region of maximum compression. Thus, compressions are regions where density as well as pressure is high. Rarefactions are the regions of low pressure where particles are spread apart and are represented by the valley, that is, the lower portion of the curve. 
a peak is called the crest and a valley is called the trough of a wave the distance between two consecutive compressions or two consecutive rarefactions is called the wavelength the wavelength is usually represented by the greek letter lambda its si unit is meter Heinrich Rudolf Hertz was born on 22nd February 1857 in Hamburg, Germany and educated at the University of Berlin. He confirmed J.C. Maxwell's electromagnetic theory by his experiments. He laid the foundation for future development of radio, telephone, telegraph and even television. He also discovered the photoelectric effect which was later explained by Albert Einstein. The SI unit of frequency was named as hertz in his honor. Frequency tells us how frequently an event occurs. Suppose you are beating a drum. How many times you are beating the drum in unit time is called the frequency of your beating the drum. We know that When sound is propagated through a medium, the density of the medium oscillates between a maximum value and a minimum value. The change in density from the maximum value to the minimum value and then again to the maximum value makes one complete oscillation. The number of such oscillations per unit time is the frequency of the sound wave. If we can count the number of the compressions or air fractions that cross us per unit time, we will get the frequency of the sound wave. It is usually represented by the Greek letter nu. Its SI unit is hertz. The time taken by two consecutive compressions or air fractions to cross a fixed point is called the time period of the wave. In other words we can say that the time taken for one complete oscillation is called the time period of the sound wave it is represented by the symbol t its si unit is seconds s frequency and time period are related as follows frequency is 1 by t a violin and a flute may both be played at the same time in an orchestra Both sound travel through the same medium that is air and arrive at our ear at the same time. Both sounds travel at the same speed irrespective of the source, but the sounds we receive are different. This is due to the different characteristics associated with the sound. Pitch is one of the characteristics. How the brain interprets the frequency of an emitted sound is called its pitch the faster the vibration of the source the higher is the frequency and the higher is the pitch as shown here thus a high pitch sound corresponds to the more number a high pitch sound corresponds to more number of compressions and rarefactions passing a fixed point per unit time objects of different sizes and conditions vibrate at different frequencies to produce sounds of different pitch The magnitude of the maximum disturbance in the medium on either side of the mean value is called the amplitude of the wave. It is usually represented by the letter A. For sound, its unit will be that of density or pressure. The loudness or softness of a sound is determined basically by its amplitude. The amplitude of the sound wave depends upon the force with which an object is made to vibrate. For example, if we strike a table lightly, we hear we hear a soft sound because we produce a sound wave of less energy. If we hit the table hard, we hear a louder sound. Can you tell us why? Let us know in the comment section below. A sound wave spreads out from its source. As it moves away from the source, its amplitude as well as its loudness decreases. Louder sound can travel a larger distance as it is associated with higher energy. 
the quality or timbre of sound is that characteristic which enables us to distinguish one sound from another having the same pitch and loudness the sound which is more pleasant is said to be of a rich quality a sound of single frequency is called a tone the sound which is produced due to a mixture of several frequencies is called a note and it is pleasant to listen to noise is unpleasant to the ear music is pleasant to hear and is of rich quality okay so now if we say which wave property determines loudness or pitch it would be amplitude guess which sound has a higher pitch a guitar or car horn the frequency of the vibration of a sound produced by a guitar is greater than that produced by a car horn since the pitch of a sound is proportional to its frequency the guitar has a higher pitch than a car horn the speed of sound is defined as the distance which a point on a wave such as a compression or a rarefaction travels per unit time now we know that speed is distance upon time we can say it is lambda upon t where lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave it is the distance traveled by the sound wave in one time period of the wave thus lambda times v is speed the speed of sound remains almost the same for all frequencies in a given medium under the same physical conditions let's see a few examples a sound wave has a frequency of 2 kilohertz and a wavelength of 35 cm how long will it take to travel 1.5 km frequency is 2 kilohertz which is 2000 hertz wavelength is 35 cm which is 0.35 m we know that speed of the wave would be wavelength into frequency hence it is 700 meters per second thus sound will take 2.1 seconds to travel a distance of 1.5 km now calculate the wavelength of a sound wave whose frequency is 220 hertz and speed is 440 meters per second in a given medium now frequency is 220 hertz speed is 440 meters per second we know that speed is wavelength times frequency so it is 440 is equal to wavelength into 220 thus wavelength is 2 therefore the wavelength of the sound wave is 2 meters the amount of sound energy passing each second through unit area is called the intensity of sound we sometimes use the terms loudness and intensity interchangeably but they are not the same loudness is a measure of the response of the ear to the sound even when two sounds are of equal intensity we may hear one is louder than the other simply because our ear detects it better speed of sound in different media sound propagates through a medium at a finite speed the sound of a thunder is heard a little later than the flash of light is seen we can pick out that sound travels with a speed which is much less than the speed of light the speed of sound depends on the properties of the medium through which it travels the speed of sound decreases when we go from solid to gaseous state the speed of sound in a medium depends on the temperature of the medium too In any medium as we increase the temperature the speed of sound increases for example the speed of sound in air 
is 331 meters per second at 0 degree Celsius and 344 meter per second at 22 degree Celsius. The speeds of sound at a particular temperature in various media are listed here. Now, if I ask you, in which of the three media, air, water or iron, does sound travel the fastest at a particular temperature? The speed of sound will be greater in iron as it is the densest. Hence, among the three media, air, water or iron, sound travels fastest in iron at a particular temperature. We are waiting to get a feedback from you. Please leave a comment and help us know how do you find this video. Moving on. Sonic Boom When the speed of any object exceeds the speed of sound, it is said to be traveling at supersonic speed. Bullets, jet aircraft, etc. often travel at supersonic speeds. When a sound producing source moves with a speed higher than that of sound, it produces shock waves in air. These shock waves carry a large amount of energy. The air pressure variation associated with this type of shock waves produces a very sharp and loud sound called the sonic boom. The shock waves produced by a supersonic aircraft have enough energy to shatter window glass and even damage buildings. Reflection of Sound Sound bounces off a solid or a liquid like a rubber ball bounces off a wall. Like light, sound gets reflected at the surface of a solid or liquid and follows the same laws of reflection as you have studied in earlier classes. The directions in which the sound is incident and is reflected make equal angles with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence and the three are in the same plane. An obstacle of large size which may be polished or rough is needed for the reflection of sound waves. Echo If we shout or clap near a suitable reflecting object, such as a tall building or a mountain, we will hear the same sound again a little later. This sound which we hear is called an echo. The sensation of sound persists in our brain for about 0.1 seconds. To hear a distinct echo, the time interval between the original sound and the reflected one must be at least 0.1 seconds. If we take the speed of sound to be 344 meters per second at a given temperature, say 22 degrees Celsius in air, the sound must go to the obstacle and reach back the ear of the listener on reflection after 0.1 seconds. Hence, the total distance covered by the sound from the point of generation to the reflecting surface and back should be at least 344 into 0.1, that is 34.4 meters. Thus, for hearing distant echoes, the minimum distance of the obstacle from the source of sound must be half of this distance, that is 17.2 meters. This distance will change with the temperature of air. Echoes may be heard more than once due to successive or multiple reflections. The rolling of thunder is due to the successive reflections of the sound from a number of reflecting surfaces, such as the clouds and the land. Let's see an example here. A person clapped his hands near a cliff and heard the echo after 2 seconds. What is the distance of the cliff from the person if the speed of the sound is taken as 346 meters per second? Now the speed is 346 and the time taken is 2 seconds. Distance travelled is B into T which is 692 meters. In 2 seconds, sound has to travel twice the distance between the cliff and the person. Hence, the distance between the cliff and the person is 692 by 2 which is 346 meters. Let's see one more example. 
an echo is heard in 3 seconds what is the distance of the reflecting surface from the source given that the speed of sound is 342 meters per second now the total distance traveled is v into t which is 342 into 3 which gives us 1026 hence the distance of the reflecting surface from the source is half of this distance which is 513 meters reverberation a sound created in a big hall will persist by repeated reflection from the walls until it is reduced to a value where it is no longer audible the repeated reflection that results in this persistence of sound is called reverberation in an auditorium or big hall excessive reverberation is highly undesirable to reduce reverberation the roof and the walls of the auditorium are generally covered with sound absorbent materials like compressed fiberboard rough plaster or draperies the seat materials are also selected on the basis of their sound absorbing properties uses of multiple reflection of sound megaphones or loud hailers horns musical instruments such as trumpets and chehnais are all designed to send sound in a particular direction without spreading it in all directions in these instruments a tube followed by a conical opening reflects sound successively to guide most of the sound waves from the source in the forward direction towards the audience stethoscope it is a medical instrument used for listening to sounds produced within the body mainly in the heart or lungs in stethoscopes the sound of the patient's heartbeat reaches the doctor's ears by multiple reflection of sound as shown here generally the ceilings of concert halls conference halls and cinema halls are curved so that sound after reflection reaches all corners of the hall sometimes a curved sound board may be placed behind the stage so that the sound after reflecting from the sound board spreads evenly across the width of the hall don't forget to like share and subscribe the video next is range of hearing The audible range of sound for human beings extends from about 20 hertz to 20000 hertz. Children under the age of 5 and some animals such as dogs can hear up to 25 kilohertz. As people grow older, their ears become less sensitive to higher frequencies. Sounds of frequencies below 20 hertz are called infrasonic sound or infrasound. If we could hear infrasound we would hear the vibrations of a pendulum just as we hear the vibrations of the wings of a bee Rhinoceroses communicate using infrasound of frequency as low as 5 hertz Whales and elephants produce sound in the infrasound range It is observed that some animals get disturbed before earthquakes Earthquakes below earthquakes produce low frequency infrasound before the main shock waves begin which possibly alert the animals Frequencies higher than 20 kHz are called ultrasonic sound or ultrasound Ultrasound is produced by animals such as dolphins bats and porpoises Moths of certain families have very sensitive hearing equipment. These moths can hear the high frequency squeaks of the bat and know when a bat is flying nearby and are capable to escape capture. Rats also play games by producing ultrasound. 
people with hearing loss may need a hearing aid a hearing aid is an electronic battery operated device the hearing aid receives sound through a microphone the microphone converts the sound waves to electrical signals these electrical signals are amplified by an amplifier the amplified electrical signals are given to a speaker of the hearing aid the speaker converts the amplified electrical signal to sound and sends to the ear for clear hearing let's see the applications of ultrasound ultrasound are high frequency waves ultrasounds are able to travel along well defined paths even in the presence of obstacles ultrasounds are used extensively in industries and for medical purposes ultrasound is generally used to clean paths located in hard to reach places for example spiral tube or chip paths electronic components etc objects to be cleaned are placed in a cleaning solution and ultrasonic waves are sent into the solution due to the high frequency the particles of dust grease and dirt get detached and drop out the objects thus get thoroughly cleaned ultrasounds can be used to detect cracks and flaws in metal blocks metallic components are generally used in construction of big structures like buildings machines bridges and also scientific equipment the cracks or holes inside the metal blocks which are invisible from outside reduces the strength of the structure ultrasonic waves are allowed to pass through the metal block and detectors are used to detect the transmitted waves if there is even a small defect the ultrasonic the ultrasound gets deflected back indicating the presence of the flaw or defect as shown here ordinary sound of longer wavelengths cannot be used for such purposes as it will bend around the corners of the defective location and enter the detector ultrasonic waves are made to reflect from various parts of the heart and form the image of the heart this technique is called echocardiography ultrasound scanner is an instrument which uses ultrasonic waves for getting images of internal organs of the human body a doctor may image the patient's organs such as liver gallbladder uterus kidney etc it helps the doctor to detect abnormalities such as stones in the gallbladder and kidney or tumors in different organs in this technique the ultrasonic waves travel through the tissues of the body and get reflected from a region where there is a change of tissue density these waves are then converted into electrical signals that are used to generate images of the organ these images are then displayed on a monitor or printed on a film this technique is called ultrasonography ultrasonography is also used for examination of the fetus during pregnancy to detect congenital defects and growth abnormalities ultrasound may be employed to break small stones formed in the kidneys into fine grains these grains later get flushed out with urine the acronym sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging sonar is a device that uses ultrasonic waves to measure the distance direction and speed of underwater objects how does the sonar work sonar consists of a transmitter and a detector and is installed in a boat or a ship as shown here the transmitter produces and transmits ultrasonic waves these waves travel through water and after striking the object on the seabed get reflected back and are sensed by the detector the detector converts the ultrasonic waves into electrical signals which are appropriately interpreted the distance of the object 
that reflected the sound wave can be calculated by knowing the speed of sound in water and the time interval between transmission and reception of the ultrasound let the time interval between transmission and reception of ultrasound signal be t let the speed of sound water sound through sea water be v the total distance 2d traveled by the ultrasound is 2d is equal to v into t this method is called echo ranging the sonar technique is used to determine the depth of the sea and to locate underwater hills valleys submarine icebergs sunken ships etc for example a ship sends out ultrasound that returns from seabed and is detected after 3.42 seconds if the speed of ultrasound through sea water is 1531 meters per second what is the distance of the seabed from the ship given time between transmission and detection is 3.42 seconds ultrasound speed in sea water is 1531 distance traveled by ultrasound is twice the depth of the sea so 2d is equal to 1531 into 3.42 hence d is 2618 meter thus the distance of the seabed from the ship is 2.62 kilometers let's see one more example a submarine emits a sonar pulse which returns from an underwater cliff in 1.02 seconds if the speed of this sound in sea water is 1531 meters per second how far away is the cliff we are given that the time between transmission and detection of sonar pulse is 1.02 seconds speed of sound in sea in salt water is 1531 meters per second if t is the distance of the cliff total distance traveled is 2d thus 2d is v times t thus d is 1531 into 1.02 by 2 which gives us 780.81 meters As mentioned earlier, bats search out prey and fly in dark night by emitting and detecting reflections of ultrasound waves. The high-pitched ultrasonic squeaks of the bat are reflected from the obstacles or prey and returned to bat's ear. The nature of reflection tells the bat where the obstacle or prey is and what is it like. Porpoises also use ultrasound for navigation and location of food in the dark. Let's see the structure of human ear. We are able to hear with the help of an extremely sensitive device called the ear. It allows us to convert pressure variations in air with audible frequencies into electrical signals that travel to the brain via the auditory nerve. Let's know the auditory aspect of human ear. The outer ear is called pinna. It can it collects the sound from the surroundings. The collected sound passes through the auditory canal. At the end of the auditory canal there is a thin membrane called the eardrum or tympanic membrane. When the compression of the medium reaches the eardrum the pressure on the outside of the membrane increases and forces the eardrum inward Similarly the eardrum moves outward when a rarefaction reaches it In this way the eardrum vibrates The vibrations are amplified several times by three bones the hammer anvil and stirrup in the middle ear The middle ear transmits the amplified pressure variations received from the sound wave to the inner ear. In the inner ear, the pressure variations are turned into electric signals by cochlea. These electrical these electrical signals are sent to the brain via the auditory nerve. And the brain interprets them as sound. Here are the auditory parts of human ear. Hope you like the video. In that case, please give us a thumbs up. It would mean a lot to us. Keep spreading smiles, make healthy choices, be kind and take good care of yourselves too. Bye-bye.